Okay, so the next topic is conservation of momentum. So uh, the statement here is uh, that if you have a system of particles, um, the rate of change of total momentum of the system equals to the net force applied to the system. But since the forces internal to the system are going to cancel in pairs using Newton number three, that means that the net force must be from forces external to the system. Okay, so symbolically, um, capital P is the sum of all of the individual momenta, and the rate of change of capital P is equal to the, the net force, which is the sum of the external forces. So there's a particular case here we want to consider. Um, the general case is, is stated right here, but the general, uh, but the particular case is, if the the net external forces are zero, as as, as uh, sometimes uh, happens, um, then the uh, total momentum is the rate of change of the total momentum of zero is is equal to zero. But um, if a quantity's time derivative is zero, that means that quantity is constant with respect to time. And that's, that's the, uh, the conservation of momentum. Um, so uh, we're going to see um, several examples of that um, in this chapter. So to take an example, let's say we had a 250 gram air track glider, which has an initial velocity of 0 0.75 meters per second and that it collides with a 500 gram air track glider that's initially at rest. And let's say that the 250 gram glider has a, um, a velocity of minus 0 0.21 meters per second after the collision. Um, the question is what, what, what is the velocity of the 500 gram glider after the collision? So what we would do in this case is we take the uh, system to be the two gliders and we consider the horizontal um, uh, direction, the x-direction. And uh, for the x-direction, um, fx net external is equal to zero. Uh, there's no friction. It's on a, um, an air track. Um, so there's no um, external force on this system in the x-direction. And that means the total momenta for the two uh, gliders is going to be constant. So we can use that fact to, uh, to solve for the velocity of the 500 uh, gram glider after the collision. Um, so basically what we do is we set the initial momentum equal to the final momentum. The um, initial momentum of, uh, of M2 is, uh, is zero. Um, uh, M2 is the 500 gram glider. Um, and and then we can um, then solve for the final momentum of uh, of the uh, of the heavy glider, which is the difference in the momentum of the um, it's it's the it's the initial momentum minus the final momentum of the uh, smaller mass glider divided by the mass of the uh, larger mass glider. So in other words, it's m1 over m2 times VXI1 minus VXF1. Uh, a little uh, comment about the notation here. I'm, I'm following Knight on this one just to be consistent with the book. So you can you can see here um, I means initial, X means in the X direction, and uh, putting parentheses around and subscripting one. This means mass one, and and similarly the um, uh, subscripting um, mass 2 like this indicates the, the other mass. So if we put numbers in here, um, M1 is the 250 and M2 is the 500 gram glider, what we would get would, would be uh, the ratio of these two masses times the um, initial uh, velocity of M1 minus the final velocity of M1. But since M1 reverses uh, direction, um, that means uh, this, uh, these two minuses reconcile into a plus, and you get uh, one half times uh, 0 0.96 um, meters per second, which is uh, 0 0.48 meters per second.
Okay, so let's do an, an example here of conservation of momentum. Another example, let's imagine that we had a 100 kilogram astronaut in, in outer space that was stranded 50 meters from, uh, from a space station. Um, so to get back to the space station, the astronaut throws a uh, 500 gram wrench at 15 meters per second directly away from the space station question is how long does it take for the astronaut to reach the space station so um, so the um, scenario is um, that uh, initially we have um, big M plus little m big, l big M represents the astronaut little m represents the wrench um, but finally um, we have um, the wrench going directly away from the space station and big M going towards the space station. The space station would be um, off to the right in this scenario. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take the system to be little m plus big M, that is the wrench and the astronaut, and um, the net external force is equal to zero. Um, there is no external force on little m plus big M there is the force of the astronaut on the wrench, but then there's an equal and opposite force of the wrench on the astronaut. Internal forces cancel via Newton number three. Um, that's that's um, the, the argument that we use for internal forces. Um, so what we can say uh, then is that the initial momentum is zero, um, but then that means the final momentum has to be zero as well, but, that, but that's done in different ways. The final momentum is zero uh, because um, little m is moving in one direction and big M is moving in the other direction. So we can solve um, for the final velocity of the uh, astronaut. I'm using big V and big M for the astronaut, little m and little v for, uh, for the wrench. And so putting the numbers in <coughs> as 0.5 kilograms over 100 kilograms times minus 15 meters per second. Uh, the wrench is going uh, to the left, which we're going to bookkeep as the minus direction. And so that gives the astronaut a, um, um, a velocity after the collision of uh, plus 0 0.075 meters per second. And so again, I have two minus signs here, which reconcile into, uh, into plus. Um, and so to figure out how much time it takes the astronaut to, to traverse that 50 meters, uh, that's, that's very simple. If we have the astronaut's uh, uh, velocity, we can just take the, the separation between the astronaut and the, um, and the space station, 50 meters, and divide by um, their speed towards it and conclude that it takes, um, well, 667 seconds. Um, which is 11 minutes, 7 seconds, and hopefully um, the astronaut has the air supply uh, requisite to, uh, to get him or her to the, uh, to the space station. And if you think now about, it, of, about this in terms of Newton number 3, um, just to repeat what I said before, the astronaut um, exerts a force to the left on the wrench uh, but that, by Newton number three, means that the wrench exerts a force on the astronaut to the right. And we do not know what that force is, but we do know that momentum is conserved, and the impulses from each force are equal and opposite. And so uh, here I've drawn an F versus T um, curve for, first of all, the, the wrench on the astronaut, which is to the right, and therefore it's above um, the T axis, and then the uh, mirror image of that force uh, by Newton number three is the force of of the um, astronaut on little m, which which of course is to the left, and then this these are um, negatives of each other for each instant of time, and so since the total impulse cancels out, we can therefore um, rewrite the initial momentum plus the j is equal to the final momentum. And, and, and because of, of this um, scenario here, uh, the J is zero for the system and therefore momentum is conserved. I'm saying things in, in a little bit uh, a different way than what we did uh, up top there.